He is the host of the number one afternoon drive time sports talk show in the San Francisco Bay Area, representing Warriors and uh, the Warriors and Dub Nation with 95.7 The Game, the flagship station of the Golden State Warriors, Damon Bruce. Are you ready to talk Warriors and have some fun, my man? It's been a while, Cyrus. dude. It's it's great to see you, first of all. I mean it, man. We've known each other almost as long as I think I've been in Bay Area Radio, so it's dude. awesome to see you. It's great to join uh, the Lockdown Network. I think you guys do a fabulous job, so it's cool. Let's chop it up. I, I love calling this place home, man. This is my perfect fit. I, I It took me a long time to find a good fit. But anyways, we're going to do this, and Dub Nation, enjoy. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow Damon Bruce on Twitter at Damon Bruce. I honestly didn't know I, was, I wasn't following you until a week ago. I was like, wait, I'm not following this guy. Like, it's, it, I had my bad. My me, how, bad. How, dare, how dare you? How dare you? Seriously. <laughs> how are you doing, brother? Damon Bruce, man. You're, dude, you're living at the top of the world. How is life treating you, man? And, and, and in your thoughts, keeping the Warriors uh, on, on topic, how, what are your thoughts about the Warriors, man? We've got a week to go. So here's the thing. I, my life is like the Warriors. A lot's changed since we last checked in, right? Like uh, I, I was living this uh, five straight NBA finals, going to bars, having a good time, party life. And then all of a sudden I settle down, I get married and I don't even leave the house anymore. Like I just looked on the <laughs> desk. There's a pacifier on the freaking desk. Like that's all you need to know about how life is. But I'm great. I'm great. Uh, the Warriors got what? Three rings. I got one ring. I've been married now. The kids are great. And and look, uh, you know, the future for my family and the Golden State Warriors will go one of two ways. Things are going to go really, really, really well or who the hell knows like that. That's the way it is in life. And if you're asking me to predict how everything goes here, I boy, this is going to be a disappointing interview because I got no idea how this plays out. Like if you told me the Warriors went to battled through the Western Conference finals and somehow reached the NBA finals, I'd believe you. If you told me that Curry didn't look right and for whatever reason they bowed out in the first round against Utah, I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't call you crazy for predicting it either. I mean, this is <laughs> this is a really good team that could fall flat on its face instantly or they could just, you know, flip that switch that they've said they've had all year but we really haven't seen them been able to find it and blow our doors off. I mean, I, I do not know what to expect. It feels like they've been two or three different teams all year long with all the moving pieces that they've had. Uh, they had the monster start to the year. And then, you know, a real sort of creep up to an all-star game, which Andrew Wiggins forgot how to play basketball during. Yeah. And then, you know, and then he's just found the switch on the wall. He's had a couple of really good games here at the end. Uh, Bielitsa who spent, you know, 55 games doing nothing in the middle of a good start. And the Kings game is having, you know, like, hey, you're telling me Bielitsa's now in the puzzle piece again? Like, uh, okay, so if that's going to happen, they could go far. If that doesn't happen, who the hell knows? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. If, if the so they started the season 18 and 2, right? And I think we were yeah. all on cloud nine at that point, it, you know, it, and, and then they, they at Christmas Day, they beat the Suns in Phoenix. They, they're 27 and 6 at that point. Then you're right. There was like this three month plus malaise where we're like, what is going on here? Like nothing made sense, but it's coming together at the right time. This is what they do. It shouldn't surprise anyone. Right. I mean, this is, you know, Bob Myers and Kerr always seem to find that rabbit and, and pull it out when you least expect it. Let's say they're healthy. Let's say Steph comes back and, and everyone's ready to go. Iggy's healthy. Draymond's feeling great. I mean, like get 80% clay, which is all I think anyone realistically could ask for. What's your prognosis for this Warriors team? Are they winning world championship? Did they have that in them? So if everything is, you're telling me like the knife is sharp and everybody's yes. playing, no problems at all. It's all lined up. We're in a incredibly competitive Western Conference finals. I think we're, we're watching the Warriors play the Phoenix Suns. I mean, uh, so the Phoenix Suns are a, are a problem. I mean, they're uh -huh. just a really, really good basketball team. And all the 
all the arguments, all the metrics, all the, the points that we used to say, well, this is the reason why the Warriors are to be really feared and dealt with. The Phoenix Suns have all those things right now. Like if True. you believed in the metrics that said the Warriors are officially freaking coming, well, the Warriors, the, the, excuse me, the Phoenix Suns have all of those numbers on their side this year. So I think if the Warriors are at their healthy and best and playing defense like dogs out there and you get war daddy Draymond and Steph Curry goes nuclear, it's the Western Conference Finals and it's a brass knuckles fight. And, it, you know, six, seven games for sure. I, it's going to be a dog fight between two very good teams. If that's what the Warriors look like when this whole thing starts, but the Suns are for real. And yeah. then, you know, who's coming out of, of the East. Like, I don't even want to talk about the NBA finals. Cause we don't even know what that's going to look like. I think the Fair. Warriors, you know, they're going in small against a team that's probably coming in big, you know? So I, I, they're going to go in small against the Suns if they're in the Western Conference Finals, and that's where they meet them. So it's it's going to be an uphill battle once they reach that top-tier opponent, which you should reach in the Western Conference Finals in the NBA. Right. Finals. You would hope so, yes. What, what do your, your station has insane access when it comes to the Warriors, and rightfully so. Kane Bjorn blew it. They, they prioritized the Giants over everything else, so the Warriors jumped to your station some years ago. And you get Myers on your morning I mean, show. Like, What's Damon doing? We should probably do that too. So that's, that's you know. <laughs> My point is like you get a lot of great big names regularly coming on your show. So you have this really fascinating unfettered access to, to the team. And I love that you have this access. Um, what is that like for you, man? Like, like, what, like do you, as, a, as someone who's hosting a radio show, do you feel comfortable asking whatever you want to ask? Or is there like a level of diplomacy? Because I always feel like I have a million questions to ask Myers, especially and Kerr, but I also feel like you don't want to offend them. You don't want to like burn bridges. So what's your approach when you, when you have these big interviews that are happening all the time? I mean, I think we're just honest and transparent and they're big boys who have won and competed at the highest levels of actual basketball. So an interview with me and Ray Ratto, you know, shouldn't leave anybody rattled. Not ever. I don't care what the question is. You know, it's just us. And uh, I think I think what defines, you know, the relationship that my show has with Steve Kerr. I mean, Bob does come on occasionally, but he more uh -huh. goes on the morning show than an afternoon drive where we have a weekly conversation with Steve Kerr. I love Steve Kerr. The guy, yeah, same. like forget about, forget about a basketball player that I liked when I was a kid or a coach that is now is successful. Like I like, I, I think Steve Kerr is the kind of guy you'd want to have a beer with, you know, I mean, he's Correct. just a good person. So uh, we don't have a lot of contentious back and forth. And I think that the way people try to pin down, like you need to give me the truth about your lineup in the middle of, December is ridiculous because <laughs> that's when, you know, lineups like don't, it doesn't matter. Um, there's nothing to be combative about with a team that's been this successful and really has no elements of, of negligence going on. Yeah. You, know I mean? you might not like how some of the decisions the Warriors made have turned out, but mm -hmm. every decision that they've made, I think is pretty defensible. And there is, you know, there, there's a lot of know-how. So when things go wrong, it's not like, a, oh, well, these idiots don't know what they're doing. That's a, <laughs> it, you know, that's an, a, an overreaction that is reserved for fans on social media. Um, we that's we have great access. Yeah, we have great access to Kerr. And we have, I think, an honest conversation. When things are going right, we talk about why it's going right. When things are going wrong, we talk about why it's going wrong. And, you know, it, it basically as nuanced as everyone wants to get, or should, are they using too many pin down screens or this, that, the other thing, like all these granular questions that we get accused of not asking because you're handling Steve Kerr with kid gloves. Right. Yes. It's a make or miss league. Mm -hmm. They, they knock down threes. No one can fucking beat them. They don't <laughs> knock down threes. They get beat. It's a make or miss league. It's like, that's it's, it's, you know, people are looking for this mystery that is really not, a mystery. It's a make or miss yeah. league. When they hit their shots and play defense, they're as good as anybody. Full stop. Period. When healthy, I hear you on that. And I, I guess the the questions I would ask that that I just don't feel like they're asked enough. And I'm not saying you're Can not. I swear, I, by the way, I'm so I just swore. I use the mother of all swear words. Is that okay? 
it is it's a family friendly program i think if we drop one here and there it's fine i'm done i'm, I'm okay, done okay. i just got comfortable <laughs> well, you, around you, you cyrus i'm sorry it, I, it's okay you're on terrestrial radio you can't do it there without the the old fcc still lingering around uh okay. dropping regulations on you so if you have to let loose here man this is the digital world go for it i could care less uh, but it is a typically family friendly program right. when, when i come back i i uh, i want to touch on this clay thompson thing yesterday i was laughing my ass off at that um him just looking at his phone and not giving two you know what's about anybody around him and then his mia culpa this morning first i gotta talk about a brand new sponsor of this program shady rays they're an independent sunglass company that gives you the feature of 200 dollars sunglasses for a fraction of the price that means polarized lenses well-constructed durable frames like uh, damon when you buy sunglasses are you the guy who buys the 10 dollars pair at the gas station or are you actually dropping big bucks one of the rules is never spend a lot of money on sunglasses. I'm a big believer in that. I've subscribed to it in my entire life. And like the one time I, I broke the promise, I immediately lost or broke those glasses. So never. <laughs> exactly. Dude. They, I'm interested. You learned the hard I'm, way I'm interested forward. in your pitch. Continue the pitch. <laughs> Sounds good, man. No, but look, polarized lenses, well-constructed, durable frames and premium high-end finishes. That's what you want from Shades. And sometimes you won't found the, find those anywhere else. But Shady Rays has an insane protection program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They'll send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happens, which is awesome. Give them a try. And if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. It's as simple as that. Plus, 10 meals are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com and use the promo code Locked On to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. The code, again, is Locked On for their best deals of the season. These are affordable shades. They're durable. You got a warranty. I hope they mean to meet the Damon Bruce uh, 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 criteria of success. Well, and look, I, um, I, I work with the Shady Ray every day, you know, Ray Ratto. So, um, you know, Shady <laughs> Ray, I, I love the brand name. If I had a rim shot, I would have dropped that right there. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. <laughs> Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From making Locked On Warriors your first listen for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts is free and available wherever you get podcasts. You can follow Damon Bruce on Twitter at Damon Bruce, and you can listen to him every day uh, in afternoon drive on 95.7 The Game, the flagship station of the Golden State Warriors. Damon, you're right. You and I worked together, I believe it was 2007, uh, when you came back to Kane VR. You actually worked there before, but we, I don't know. 2005. Think so, there. like, yeah. I mean, it was it was a long time ago, man. Yeah, dude, going back. And you're right, man. I, don't, I do not understand why we have not met up. That's that's on me, dude. I'll reach out. Let's do it. You're, I The moment I'm talking to you here, I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, this guy and I, like, we get along tremendously. But See, I, you know, I mean, you didn't follow me on Twitter. You don't call. You don't send flowers. That's fair. In my defense, I never leave my house, and the Twitter thing I have no defense right. for. That just by, I, by, I, by, my by bad, the way, my I, bad entirely. Um, no one left their house in the last two years, so I'll give you a pass on the two years. <laughs> so like the twelve before those two years, that's on you. But no, it's great to be with you. Let's do it. Let's get into Clay. Clay Thompson, dude, I got to play this sound. There's two sound bites. First of all, this was him yesterday, um, where he the Warriors had a shoot around, a post shoot around uh, media session. Um, where you know Steve Kerr was available, where uh, Damian Lee was available, and then Clay Thompson shows up. He shows up super late. He gets there, and this is what Clay uh, was saying when he was asked about Bielitsa. Actually, man, nobody's appreciated by the fans. Fans are so <laughs> fans, man. The real fans know what's up. I'm talking about the fans prior to winning championships who sat through many years of many years of not winning but these new fans who come around and expect greatness and they weren't anywhere to be found prior they can get away they can they, we can forget those folks they don't they don't deserve to wrap the warriors oh sorry let me what do you think about that that was his delivery was incredible it was pure comedy I, I i feel like the rhythm and timing was just i was laughing after every sentence what were your thoughts on that watching i hope he's watching dog videos i mean that's the only thing that could make that better like, what's he looking at on his phone? That's oh, my I question. I could tell you. 
I could tell you, Damon, I'm sure you know this too. Dude, he's probably texting one of the 10 supermodels he's dating right now. One of these Instagram 9.5s, I mean, right? I mean, clay. it's good to be clay. Look, it's good it's, to be clay. It's good to be clay. And you know, he's, he's, he's right about a lot of fans, man. I mean, there are fans who live to complain about things on the fringe that, you know, that, that just don't matter nearly as much. Like, the Warriors are a lot of things, but Bielitsa is part of it. Is mm -hmm. he, dude? He's he's the tenth guy on any NBA team. There's not a lot to pin on him. Now, if he shows up and plays great, I mean, I think we'll say that to say that Bielitsa hasn't done much this year and has been a disappointment is true. But the way that fans pile on. The way that there's just nothing but snark and venom all over mm -hmm. Twitter and social media, like I understand where Clay's coming from. You know, people want to hold uh, two devastating career injuries. Uh, you know, they, they want to forget about that instantly. Like, oh, he's been back for thirty games. That should be enough. It should be Clay Thompson, this you know, the the guy who was playing in Game Six of the NBA Finals right before he tore his ACL against the Toronto Raptors, and that's the Clay I want. I want him every night, and I want it now. <laughs> it's not how it works. It's not how it works. It's, no, it's not. And he 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 dropped a mea culpa this morning, and the setting, the delivery, is incredible. This From is Clay boat. Thompson this Fantastic. morning. Yes, amazing. And here is Clay, uh, uh, Captain Clay. I'm sorry. Bandwagon fans are a good thing. That means you turn people over to your style of play. So sorry if I offended anybody. It's not my intention. We welcome all Warrior fans. Around the globe. <laughs> Eating the breakfast sandwich, just cruising. He's you're right, he's living the life, man. He is he knows what life is about. He gets it. And you he know it. Kerr says that he's the most hands-off, you know, superstar you're gonna find this side of Steph Curry. And the fact that he gets to have both those guys on a team is just a it's gotta be a coaching dream. I mean, whatever mm. you have to do to manage, you know, Draymond's personality on a daily basis, you never have to worry about your backcourt. You know, you just don't. Um, it, it's <laughs> it's awesome to watch these guys play. Like we are, you know, it, it, a lot of people want to talk about, well, if the Warriors don't win a title this year, something incredibly wrong has happened. But what are you talking about? The window here is four more years. Steph Curry wow. has four more years on his contract. And if there really is like a two timeline scenario between the older guard and the younger class of Poole, Kaminga, Moody, and hopefully eventually James Wiseman, like if those two timelines meet, for any of that to have expected to have happened this year in the year where Clay came back in the year where Draymond missed more games due to injury than ever before in his life. Like it just, yeah. it probably wasn't meant to be this year. And the success of a 50 win season could be a little bit of ahead of schedule and people get greedy when the Warriors are good. Old warrior fans now get greedy. And like Clay said, new warrior fans, the bandwagon fans who just got here, you know, they don't remember Ike Diagu. They don't remember <laughs> Troy Murphy and Mike Dunleavy being the cornerstones of your hope. I mean, they're the assistant GM now. Be careful. The assistant GM. <laughs> right. Like, and I, here's the I thing. He'd be, he'd be nice enough to tell you that back in the day, the Warriors were a clown show, dude. They were. Oh, they were. Was, Todd, oh, bro. Todd Fuller, Joe Smith. I, I could go on, on and on for the Bungles so, organization. Yeah. There, there, there's a lot of nouveau riche fans who, you know, who just have been eaten so well that they don't even remember what it's like to be hungry in terms of being a Warriors fan. They don't and remember they think, when they're they don't remember their head coaches were being choked out in practices. Yeah, I mean, look, they think <laughs> having to go through a year of Curry's injury and Clay Thompson's injury is the worst stretch of Warriors basketball ever. It, it wasn't. It was bad. Those are it was a huge dip in an otherwise successful moment. But yep, good it's lord, so true, man. I mean, yeah, I, you got to run. I could I could cover a million subjects with you, but I, you got you got to do your you got to do what's really important, which is afternoon drive. I. Dude, your younger kid is Aussie. I just met your baby. And look, I'm going to be straight with you, man. There are some ugly babies out there. Yours is not. That is a he's cute. Not one. He's, thank you. He's not one. I mean, that's the thing. I've had enough people tell me that where I, I'm believing you. And it's, oh, don't a believe it. thing, it's a good thing my wife's genes are coursing through that child. It really <laughs> is. No, I just would not say anything. I, that's That would be my, if, if, if your baby was not, that's a cute baby. And what's your older son's name? Jack. 
Jack oh and Ozzy. God. Yeah, man. Jack and Ozzy. Congratulations, dude. I, I'm really happy for you, Damon. I want you back on so we got more time if that's okay. How about this? Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's see what the playoffs look like and get through a matchup, and then we'll do it again, okay? When we know a little bit more, when we see what they look like once the playoffs starts. And look, the show really goes up now. Like, if, you know, we, we've heard Draymond talk about 82 game players and 16 game players. Hopefully there's a lot of 16 game players on this team. We know that there are some for sure. Kerr is a 16 game coach. They know how to win a title. Can they? Can they? Will they stay oh. healthy enough? That's the big question. And matchups mean the world. So once we know what some matchups are, let's keep talking, Brett. It was, it was great to talk to you. Same man, and that is the voice of a true broadcast professional, which you can hear again every afternoon. What is what is the afternoon drive now? Is it th three to six? So oh, the, the time's yeah, three to six. Be. Three to six. Perfect. They wanted an extra hour, and I just said I can't work that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got Jack and Ozzy, man. You got a family priorities, my brother. You you got and you got it dialed, man. Congratulations. I'll see you soon, and so all the the listeners and and viewers of uh, Locked On Warriors, man. Damon, great to see you, brother. And you can follow Damon Bruce on Twitter at Damon Bruce. Go have a great show, my man. Say hello to Ray Router for me and keep living, brother. You're doing I won't, great. Congrats. I won't even swear next time, I promise. <laughs> All right. Take it, David. That was the great Damon Bruce uh, joining me. I'm really flattered that he took time out. He's a busy man. And again, you can listen to him every afternoon on 95.7 The Game. Uh, it's the Afternoon Drive Show, the number one afternoon drive sports show uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. They're the official flagship station of the Golden State Warriors. And next time he comes on, maybe I'll, I'll try to pitch him some Built Bars, longtime sponsor of this program. Uh, they're amazing. They taste great. They're relatively good for you, about as good for you as a protein bar could ever be. Uh, they got the puffs. If you love those marshmallowy flavors that come with um, your protein bars, that's the way to go. If you haven't had one of those yet, you are missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars and it's not just the puffs they got a wide variety of flavors and regardless of the flavor it's covered in 100 real chocolate the puffs are included 100 real chocolate these are low calorie high protein bars replace your candy bars with these candy bars are toxic your average candy bar has 240 calories and 30 grams of sugar which is horrible for you whereas your typical i'm sorry whereas your pro your built bar has 130 calories only four grams of sugar, yet it also comes with 17 grams of protein. That is a nutritious punch you need. I always talk about the fact that when I need to feel full, yet feel putting nutrition in my body in the process, I always go with the Built Bars. You can have flavors from mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. I love the cooking cookies and cream myself. They're all delicious. They always come out with new flavors. They're all about the taste. Just go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code is LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Many thanks again to Damon Bruce for coming on today. Uh, he had to run for his afternoon show, and the man is incredibly busy. Otherwise, he would have stuck around with me for this final segment, um, which I'll keep very short. The Warriors are off yet again today. This is a long three-game stretch where they, they're getting a chance to focus on practice, focus on uh, uh, schematics, focus on specific plays, situational uh, situ uh, 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 designs. Um, Damian Lee let us slip yesterday that the team was actually working on end of game situations uh, as part of their practice, which is actually an area which until this year has always been a strength for this team. Um, but they have been struggling recently. So uh, uh, the team and they had another shoot around today. I'm sure there's going to be more great sound bites coming from that, which I'll hopefully play on tomorrow's show. Uh, and tomorrow the Warriors are going to be playing the L.A. Lakers, who I have to talk about for a moment here, folks. The Los Angeles Lakers are officially eliminated from the playoffs i kid you not this is a team with three games remaining in the regular season could not even qualify for the play-in game i'm not even talking about them like not making the you know the the main playoffs like like everyone was talking about them getting into the play-in they're not even going into the play-in 
That is incredible. Now, LeBron James has a show. Uh, I think it's called The Shop on HBO. And on the recent episode, he made a startling uh, uh, quote. And, and I'll try to find the soundbite for you uh, for tomorrow's show. But if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the attribution right there. I'll verbalize it, obviously, for the podcast audience. And here, someone was asked about, like, who would you, who do you want to play with in the NBA besides your son, Bronny, right? I mean, we, we all are fully aware that LeBron wants to play one season with his son in the NBA, uh, which would be the year after next. But he was asked who beside Bronny would he like to play with? And his response was, quote, Steph Curry. Steph Curry's the one I want to play with for sure in today's game. Right now, it's Steph. Man, I love everything about that guy. Lethal. When he gets out of his car, you better guard him right from the moment he pulls up to the arena. You might want to guard him when he gets out of bed, unquote. So when he said that, and given the Lakers situation where they're done, okay, like, and and, and I think Brian Weinhorst, uh, I can't remember who exactly said this, but they had a tremendous tweet, or, or maybe it was in another quote pulled from a show he was on at ESPN, where he basically, basically said LeBron James has a four-year expiration on wherever he plays. Meaning, by the time he gets to year four, he has completely worn out the welcome. He's completely decimated the franchise because wherever he goes, he basically, him and his clutch group, basically take on a GM role. And their influence in this game, and especially in whatever team he plays on, is so strong that they can, they bow to him. They cow, they, they kowtow to him, and they basically say whatever you want to do, we'll do it. This Lakers team that was constructed horribly was LeBron's team. This is what he actually wanted. It is utterly insane. So when he drops this quote, and next year would be a year four, I believe, with the Los Angeles Lakers, or has he already played four years? I'm actually just trying to do the math in my head. Maybe he's already done four years, and next year would be year five. I think that is actually the correct math. Um Look what he's done. Look what he did in, in, in Cleveland when he left. That, that organization was in shambles. Look what he did in Miami when he left. That organization was in shambles. And a lot of people are talking from that quote that maybe LeBron wants to finish his career, or at least the next stop in his career, who knows how much longer this guy's going to play, uh, will be with the Golden State Warriors. And, and, I mean, that's seriously something people are talking about. It's a weird subject for me. Makes my stomach churn a little bit because I'm so highly critical of LeBron James, not as a player. Okay, there, there's, it's un, there's no question he's one of the all-time greats in this game. And in fact, if the Lahive, which is a nickname I give to all to his ridiculous, ridiculously illogical fan base, if they ever just said he's the best all-around player, that's an argument I can support. I mean, this is a player that can play any position masterfully at that. Now, granted, Magic Johnson did the same, and Magic Johnson has five championships, but you can make that argument. LeBron is that good. I'm not going to sit here and say he's the greatest ever, and I think that's a ludicrous thing to say simply because the mentality of winning championships is a vitally important variable when you're talking about the all-time great. And I don't think LeBron's mental toughness comes anywhere near Michael Jordan's. But I digress. We're talking about LeBron on the Warriors. And the question is, would the fan base be okay with that? I saw one tweet that said, I'd rather see James Harden. I forgot who it was. I think it was Brian Witt who said, I'd rather see James Harden win a championship than see LeBron on the Warriors. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like strong words, man. That is crazy. But that's how some people feel about LeBron. And I don't blame them. That's a crazy part. I, I sympathize. Actually, I'm like, whoa, yeah, that's a fair point. So... My my perspective on it, my stance on it, I, I I'd be grudgingly accepted. My inner soul would be rife with turmoil if that happened. But look, man, if he becomes a, a member of the Golden State Warriors, as long as the price to get him is not high, and what I mean by that is, you'd realistically have to trade Wiggins to match the salaries, because I think LeBron has one more year left in his contract, maybe two even. I, I think it's one. But uh, so you'd have to trade Wiggins. I don't know if I'd want to give up anyone else of, of legitimate value. I mean, if they're asking for the Juan Toscano Andersons and Damian Lees, yeah, sure, go ahead. But if you're starting to ask for Moses Moody, I mean, even Moody I'm not okay with. I'm sure as you know what, not even considering Jordan Poole or Jonathan Kaminga, 
You're not giving up any of the veterans. I mean, ideally, if you get LeBron James, you'd want him to be part of your starting five. I mean, I think that would be the only option. I can't see LeBron ever coming off the bench. So, yeah, if it's Andrew Wiggins and maybe like one first round pick, all right, yeah, let's do it. Go for it. Bring on, bring LeBron in. But that's all I would give up for him. And again, it would be begrudging. But would I be willing to accept LeBron winning a fifth title if it were on the Golden State Warriors? Heck yeah, of course. Um, but that's interesting. And that's a fascinating thing he dropped. And honestly, that's all you're going to be getting from LeBron and the Lakers for the rest of this year. Outside of LeBron, maybe still chasing the scoring title if he decides to play. Um, which again, I personally, in a, in a team sport, to be pursuing individual accolades like that, that's always the part of LeBron I just did not respect. I don't respect. He is all about him. And he's not about the team. He's not about the community. And that's that bothers me. I just have never liked that. But if he comes to the Warriors, look, man, who am I to say, don't do it? <laughs> I mean, especially because there's he would undoubtedly help the team win a championship. But that's out there. If I, I might play the sound by tomorrow. And also on tomorrow's show, staying on the radio tip, Brian Murphy. He's the host of the KNBR Morning Show. Former longtime journalist of the San Francisco Chronicle. I love Murph. He's going to be joining me tomorrow afternoon as we lead into the Thursday night NBA on TNT game with the Los Angeles Lakers, a team who is no longer in the playoff hunt. And when we say playoff hunt, it is now not eight teams that make the playoffs. It is now technically 10 teams that reach the postseason because they call it the play-in part of the postseason. And then, of course, the play-in tournament decides who's in the official playoffs. But just the fact that they couldn't even qualify for that, you deserve scored. You deserve criticism because that just flat out sucks. <laughs> oh, man, I can't help but laugh. I really can't. And it's just because of the arrogance and the cockiness that comes from so many of the players from that organization. Uh, I just I don't I, I'm not going to sit here and ever be an advocate for arrogance. That's just not something I can support. But anyways, I digress. We are done. Um, thank you so much for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. And again, tomorrow, Brian Murphy comes back or comes on. Uh, the Warriors come back after taking three days off. Um, and next week, man, we're talking playoffs. Man, I'll, I'll tell you this to wrap it up. I truly believe, and I really wish I had more time with Damon because I wanted to break this down. I also wanted to ask him about like uh, uh, Kaminga's playing minutes, Moses Moody's playing minutes. Gary Payton, the seconds playing minutes. That was really the core of my beef with Kerr this year was his management of player minutes. Um, but it, it, we're, we're on a very limited time frame there today. But it, thank you so much again, Damon Bruce, for coming on. Um, and in terms of the Warriors, I really do believe, strongly believe that if this team is healthy, if Stephen Curry is back to his old self, if that foot heals properly, if uh, uh, Draymond Green returns to 100% his old self, which is getting there, even Steve Kerr admitted yesterday, he's turned the corner. That's huge. So if they're back, if Andrew Wiggins plays with aggression, if Klay Thompson is 80% of his old self, if uh, Bielitsa is 2021 Bielitsa, the Bielitsa we saw in that Sacramento Kings game the other night where he put up 19 and 12, if uh, Andre Iguodala, is a, has a semblance of his old self and stays healthy in the postseason. If Otto Porter Jr. shows us the Otto Porter Jr. that we saw these last this last month, where he was putting up huge rebounding numbers, making clutch baskets, playing solid defense. If Gary Payton II is healthy and he's out there giving you 20 to 25 minutes in the postseason. If Kevon Looney, who has been the Iron Man for this team, Gives them the same solid 20, 25 minutes he's been giving them, giving them all year. If all of these things come together, I don't think it's close. I think they're going to whip the Phoenix Suns. I think the, the Memphis Grizzlies will be the toughest out, but I think they can do that in six. I don't think the Utah Jazz or even the Nuggets stand a chance in the first round. I just think if, this, if it's the Nuggets, they might push the Warriors to six simply because of how good Jokic is and how big he is. The Warriors just don't have an answer defensively for him. But if it's the Utah Jazz, I could see that finishing in four or five. And whoever comes out of the East, the Warriors are handling them. I was legit worried about the Bucs until I saw that game a few weeks ago, that Saturday night nationally televised game on ABC. And the Warriors took easily took care of them, I believe, without Draymond Green. So 
This is a Warriors team that on that I honestly genuinely believe for my 37, 38 years of watching NBA basketball and 30 plus years of playing basketball. I just I'm in my 40s now. I don't play that much anymore. But from all those observation observation skills that I've accumulated over my years, from my astute careful observation of this Golden State Warriors team, I believe with all my heart that this team will win a world championship this year if all the pieces come together. And that's a huge if. But if it does, I am confident. And let's hope they make it happen. Thank you again so much for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Again, Brian Murphy joins me tomorrow. Now make your second listen, Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Thank you, folks. Later.